So coach, I've spent this whole day talking to your staff and your players. We're going to get into some of the things they said. Okay. Um, but first I want to know a little bit about you. Uh, well, I'm uh, born and raised for, in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Um, graduated from uh, Milwaukee Public School, which I'm proud of that, MPS Proud. Um, uh, went to school in uh, California for three years. Um, transferred from uh, uh, school in California to uh, school in um, North Dakota. Ended up graduating with my bachelor's degree from North Dakota State University. Um, got out, tried out for, uh, well, got invited to a couple of uh, free agent camps. Uh, didn't work. Um, got invited to a couple of um, uh, CBA and IBA uh, camps. That didn't work. Um, and you just get tired of being on that road, constantly trying to make a team or whatever. And it just got to a point where I said, I got a college degree. Let me fall back on it and continue, you know, try to help the youth, try to help my community. Hmm. So that's what I've been doing ever since. Ever since. And then you've been coaching. Yes. What was your first big coaching job? Uh, I think my first big coaching job was um, I got a job um, at Vincent High School coaching girls JV basketball. Now I have, have had some, some uh, experience before that coaching um, uh, in, in the summer leagues and mm -hmm. AAU basketball, mm -hmm. but nothing on the uh, level of high school basketball. So I got my first break coaching girls basketball. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, that was very different. Um, I'm used to guys being athletic, mm -hmm. fast, um, you know, not necessarily have to rely on basic fundamentals, um, could just trust their instincts and make plays. It's a little different for, uh, with the girls game. Mm -hmm. Um, so I had to make adjustments in coaching and, um, you know, I, I'm a type of coach, very flexible. I'm mm -hmm. a player's coach. I like to believe I am. And, um, you know, we did rip really well over there. And, um, I went from there to, uh, Malcolm X. I got a head, uh, coaching job, a girl's job at Malcolm X Academy. And, uh, the record wouldn't reflect the success that we were having, but academically and character wise, where those girls, uh, improved and, 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 and uh, developed it, it was just amazing so I would say that was a great experience as well and then I got a job at um, uh, North Division working with Keith Stewart he gave me my first job working with the boys uh, assistant on the varsity and that's where I began to get my feet wet um, went from there one year there to uh, coach uh, Diener gave me a job uh, he, he called me in told me hey you the hottest thing out there and <laughs> You know, right now I need somebody with fire, somebody who know what they're doing, um, and that he could trust. And uh, he gave me an opportunity to coach his boys over the summer. And um, from there, um, he remembered me. He gave me, he uh, brought me back in over at uh, Hamilton, um, and that was an awesome experience there with those guys. I hate we didn't finish the job and win some state championships like we should have. But then uh, he told me, you know, after we lost up state um, to Madison Memorial, he was like. It's time for you to get your own job. Mm. And uh, he said, I think you're ready. Mm. And, um, you know, at the time, I, I didn't think I was prepared. Um, I think I was still in the stages of developing and um, learning things that I could uh, improve on to, to help my players if I ever got to that, if I got blessed and put in that position. But um, uh, we had um, uh, Mr. Tanya Dare. She was actually a principal at uh, Malcolm X when I was there. She got the job here as a principal at Washington. Um, she interviewed me. She thought I was a good fit. I thought Washington was a great fit, and it's just been great ever since. And now we're in year seven. Year number seven. I love the number seven. So this legacy that we talk about started in 1950, right? Conference championship, regional, sectional, state. What does continuing the legacy mean to you? Continuing the legacy uh, here at Washington, it means uh, developing players, uh, um, um, mentally, physically, that can um, go out and continue the education at, a high, at, at the next level. Um, rather if that's uh, Division One, which we would prefer at universities, uh, mm -hmm. Division Two is not bad. Um, if they have to go NA, Division Three, we're fine with that too. But just continue to f uh, further their education. Um, if they are very talented, blessed enough, where the God sprinkled them, hopefully we need to continue to prepare these guys where they can step in and contribute right away into these college programs. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you say continuing the legacy, we got to win. We got to win big. We got to win for an ex extensive period of time because that's what's been done over the years here. Mm -hmm. 
um, big shoes to fill. There's been some great coaches here. Uh, I'm the fifth coach. Mm -hmm. um, Washington really haven't had a lot, a long, extensive uh, line of coaches. Mm -hmm. So I think that kind of credits to how great the program is because the coach really get to get here and um, organize and set up things the way he really want things to be. And um, I hope I can have a long tenure like some of those other coaches uh, before me. Now basketball is what, five months just about? So it's no sprint, it's definitely a marathon. How do you keep these guys engaged and focused and motivated? Fun. It has to be fun. Mm -hmm. You know, um, these guys got to look forward to practice every day. They got to look forward to wanting to be around each other every day, being around the coaches. Um, it's just got to be a fun atmosphere. And uh, it, 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 in having it a fun atmosphere, you still want to drive home points because basketball, from our coaching perspective, we want to use it as a vehicle to get through our kids to be successful in life. Mm -hmm. um, we know the kids we are service, servicing, we know the obstacles we up against, but that's why I got the staff that I have in. I mm -hmm. trust those guys. Those guys were players themselves. They've been college athletes. Um, they've been college students. They've been successful. Those guys know what it takes to be successful at the next level, as well as being successful at the high school level. And that's what our boys need. Mm -hmm. So now I did talk to a few of your players and they had amazing things to say about you, but they also said that you're not funny <laughs> and that you do these super long speeches before the game um, <laughs> and you get revved up. Uh, but they said one thing that they can take away from it is so far beyond basketball. Can you talk about how important it is to build up that boy and turn him into a man by the time he's done here? Like I said before, it's, it's just about using basketball as a vehicle to, to get through to these young men and drive home key points. Um, they're going to be men at some point mm -hmm. and very soon. Mm -hmm. um, and they have to step out to the world. Into the world. And as African-American men, there's roles we have to play. Our community needs us bad. Mm -hmm. You know, our families need us bad. Our youth needs us bad. And um, it's our job when these guys come to us to, you know, kind of prepare them for that. So um, when they get here, we want to make it exciting, make one make it fun, but at the same point, drive home key points and roles and expectations. We set for them that they, they have to achieve in order for them to understand their success that they're gonna have outside of this building in a few years. Mm. One thing you could say, you could say anything to your staff over there. Mm. I know one is tough, but. I love them. Mm. What about you? I love them because, you know, these guys are in this fight. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not about money. Mm -hmm. It's about their passion, their dedication, their commitment, and their love to the players. Mm -hmm. And that's why I want around my players. Mm -hmm. So for them giving that to my players, I love them for that. Mm -hmm. and what about your players? Oh, they're my, they're my dudes. Mm -hmm. You know, they like my little nephews, my little, uh, they like my little sons. Mm -hmm. um, I cherish them, I value them. Um, I want the best for him. I think that's a perfect way to end it. Coach Riley, not the funniest coach, but <laughs> he loves him. Thank, Thank you. you, coach. Thank you.